Hi guys, today we are filming some Pilates workouts at this beautiful villa in Bali, and I thought it would be the perfect day to talk to you about how to start Pilates. So let's chat about you know the benefits of doing Pilates, the basic exercises, what equipment you need, and how to put together the perfect Pilates routine, whether you are a beginner or you do just want to up your Pilates game this year. We're gonna go film a couple of workouts out by the pool, and while we do, I'm going to show you some of the foundation exercises for starting Pilates. A little bit dangerous with the coffee and the white activewear set. I'm just getting ready for my workout, but I wanted to show you guys some equipment that I like to add to my Pilates workouts. Pilates is amazing because it can be done anywhere without equipment. If you don't have it, you don't need it. But I love to add it in when I am looking for a bit of an extra burn and to you know increase that intensity. The number one piece of workout equipment I really recommend investing in is a good quality yoga mat. Ideally, you want one that is non-slip and definitely one that is a little bit thicker. My favorite brand of yoga mat is Bala, and it's because, as you can see, it's like the thickest yoga mat that there possibly is. It has a non-slip surface, so that's really good because, you know, even though Pilates is gentle, it can get very sweaty still. So it's important to not be like slipping around on the mat. A lot of times I'll see people comment that their wrist hurts or their knee hurts or their back hurts or their hips, and a lot of it could come down to just using a thicker mat. You'll see in my workouts a lot of the times I'm wearing these Bala weights and I wear them either, you know, on my wrists or on my ankles. So they're great for, you know, increasing that intensity and helping to sculpt and define the body because you're adding resistance. So they're great for, you know, doing your arm workouts. They're great for working the legs and butt a little bit deeper. I mean, they're great if you want to go for a power walk and just like look cute and <laughs> put them on because <laughs> they're like a fashion accessory at this point. You'll also also notice sometimes I add in booty bands to my workouts to really increase that intensity and challenge the body in new ways, as well as hand weights, which can be great if you are looking to build muscle with your Pilates workouts. People always ask me, am I going to get bulky if I'm doing this? Absolutely not. It's so hard for women to get bulky. These workouts will just help to, you know, define your body and Pilates really does help to give sort of more that long lean look. So if you have a mat, grab it now. and let's Let's go do a workout together and go through some basics of Pilates. For the past six months or so, I've really just been doing my own Pilates and low impact cardio workouts. And I feel so much stronger, so much more connected to my body. And it really is a total mind and body workout. I wanted to show you guys a couple of the foundation exercises and technique for starting Pilates that will really help you out if you are new or even if you're just looking to, you know, up your Pilates game a little. So let's do it. <laughs> of all Pilates exercises is the breath work. And Pilates breathing is really important because it helps us to really connect to our core and it helps to create that flatter abdominal wall. So what it means by that is you're really lifting those abs in and you're working your deepest core muscles that help to pull everything in like a corset just by your breathing. So let's do a couple of Pilates breaths together. Take your hands onto the side of your ribs and you can close down your eyes or you can watch me. But as you take a deep breath in through the nose, I want you to feel your rib cage widen so your hands move further apart. And then as you exhale, you're thinking of slightly tucking your tailbone and pulling your belly button spine. So it's that same feeling as if you cough or laugh, that gentle tensing of your abs. I'll show you a couple of these from the side. So you take a deep breath in, you feel that length through the body, and then as you exhale, slightly tucking your tailbone, that rib to hip connection, and you can just see how the abs engage just with breathing. Deep breath in, and exhale. 
So just with that breathing, you can start to feel your core muscles switching on. Now let's take it into an exercise. In Pilates, a really common position that we're in is our four point kneeling. So that's where we are, you know, hands stacked under the shoulders, knees under hips, and we're in that strong position. You really wanna get alignment in the body. So that beautiful length, your head and your tailbone should always be in line. Now taking a couple of breaths, it's really good to feel it here because you can actually feel your abs lifting in and up. So we wanna take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, really feel those abs pulling in, so vacuuming in. And if you're more advanced, you can tuck those toes and we'll lift the knees to a knee hover. Deep breath in. And exhale. One more deep breath in. And exhale. Beautiful, so now that you know how to switch your core on, let's find alignment in the body. So from here, we're gonna start to take that left knee and we're gonna stretch it back. So Pilates is really all about creating length in your body, right? Finding that strength and that stretch, really connecting to our bodies. So as you move through it, I want you to think of shapes. So we're really creating length, right? You're looking down at your mat. The top of your head is in line with your toe. It's not about lifting high, it's about finding those beautiful long lean lines. So you can do this by starting to really stretch or reaching that opposite arm long, right? Finding that nice foundation move. Good, and four point kneeling is where we basically will start most of our leg sequences, our butt sequences. So a nice little helpful tip for you here is to find that balanced weight distribution, right? We want to make sure that we have our hips facing down, our hips over knees, our shoulders over our arms, soft bend through the elbow. Sometimes I see comments on the workouts where people feel it in the opposite side when they're moving one leg. So for example, you're doing your leg lifts, but you're feeling this side. So that is normal and it's totally fine because if you think of it, our butt cheek is stabilizing us like we're doing a plank with our butt basically. So it's okay to feel it, but you should feel that working side as well. So a tip for that is to make sure that your weight is centered. A lot of times we start to shift into that opposite hip because it's easier for our body. We're relaxing. So we wanna really use our strength and make sure our weight is evenly distributed. And then it's a lot easier to just stay focused on that butt cheek you're working. Let's start to find the mind-muscle connection. We're really flowing through all the different principles of Pilates. The mind-muscle connection helps us to get results because we're making sure we're connecting to our bodies. We're feeling the right muscles working. So a great tip if you're a beginner too is to slow down exercises as you're learning them and really feel them in your body. So right now, what are we working? Our butt. I want you to think of that butt cheek lifting your leg. So we're gonna lift it up. And when you're here, imagine someone's poking you in the center of the butt cheek. Give it a little squeeze and then drop it down. Inhale, breathe, exhale. Good, bringing it all together now. We have breath, inhale. Exhale. We have alignment. We're looking down at our mat. Good. And then we're finding that mind muscle connection because we are squeezing that booty. Let's go at the top, little lift and squeeze. Now, if you come into pulses and you just squeeze that butt cheek, you know how you can really feel those glutes switching on? That is helping us make the mind muscle connection. So take a moment, tune into your body and visualize those muscles in your butt getting stronger, shaping, getting that beautiful connection to our glutes. Good, beautiful job. Let's come down into our ab curl position because that's another way that we can really start to learn the foundation moves for Pilates. Let's come down to lie on our backs and we're gonna work through our ab curl and our bridge position, which are the other two most common Pilates exercises. So from here, we wanna lie down on our back and just take your hands back onto your ribs and let's get back to that breath. So you take that deep breath in, you feel length in the body, rib cage widens. And then as you exhale, 
you're tucking the tailbone, you're really thinking of pulling those lower abs in and up, belly button spine. So inhale, finding length, and exhale, finding that deep core. Beautiful, let's start to add our ab curl. So hands behind the head. Now a real tip with this one is we're gonna start with that alignment. So we're gonna take that deep breath in, and then as you exhale, you're lifting up and don't lift high. Think of keeping that spine nice and long, bit of a C curve, looking up at the sky instead of yanking on your neck forward because we don't want to have neck pain, we just want to have our abs work. So looking up at the sky and noticing how your abdominals stay flat when you breathe like this and you lift like this. A lot of times I'll see sort of like a curl like this. People are really crunching forward and that's just causing your stomach to dome. We're not actually creating those flat abs. We're bulking them out, we're building them out. So we want to take a deep breath in, find length and scoop the abs inwards towards the spine. And now this is that same foundation move that then we start to use when we start to do things like lift our legs, we start to work through tabletop here and find those inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. We really want to keep that length in the body through everything we do. Feel those abs switching on. Good, and release, beautiful. So working through, that is one of the hardest exercises just to get down. So I really recommend slowing down as you start an ab workout. Let's come into a bridge. This is another really common Pilates move. And it's one that we really wanna get the form right so we're not hurting our low backs and we're really just feeling our glutes and hamstrings. So push your heels into the mat, feet hip distance. And as you lift it up here, I want you to find that beautiful form. So we're lengthening through the top of the thighs. Our tailbone is tucked just slightly, ribs to hips, so that we're keeping the abs engaged. A lot of times I see people relaxing here and then you just start to feel it in your low back. So it's really important that we tuck that tailbone under. We squeeze our butt, we lengthen through our thighs. We're shifting that weight forward. You're gonna hover down and then exhale, lift. So here we are finding, right? Inhale and exhale to help with the work, inhale. And exhale, we're finding length, we're finding alignment. Now let's start to think of our butt. Push through your heels, squeeze your butt cheeks at the top. Squeeze them like you're holding a winning lottery ticket between them. We don't wanna drop it. We lower, we exhale and lift. Good, we inhale and exhale. And then when you pulse, tiny controlled pulses. So sometimes I'll see like floppy kind of pulses. Mind muscle connection is everything. We really wanna control them, slow it down. It's squeeze and lift, squeeze and lift. Good, squeeze and lift, beautiful job. One of the most beautiful things about the exercises in Pilates is that there's a great mix of, you know, flowy, dynamic, and lengthening exercises, but also those smaller controlled movements that really help to target those muscles and get that nice mindful burn. It is really important to learn the form and technique to get the best results from your workouts.